what on earth were you thinking? I know that's hard for y'all to imagine. But she did. I think she had some kind of weakness or something. I don't know what it was. Had to be. Son. What on earth were you thinking? I guess that was really the problem. I wasn't thinking. Tonight, we're going to think about what on earth is in heaven. Did you think about that during the day when I mentioned it, those of you who were here this morning? Is there anything on earth that's going to be in heaven? There really are. In fact, I have found five. We're going to see them in this text. This beautiful, beautiful picture around the throne of God in the Revelation. Revelation chapter 5 and verse 1. And I saw in the right hand of Him that sat on the throne a book written and on the back side sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven, nor in earth, neither under the earth was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, John wept, because he understood the significance of this unopened book. He said, I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open, to read the book, neither to look thereon. I love this verse. Verse 5, And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the Lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. They sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by Thy blood, out of ever kindred and tongue and people and nation, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain 
to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be unto him that setteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb forever and ever. Now you talk about a scene or a setting that should excite us as children of God. John saw. John saw in vision a hopeless situation. That's why he wept. There was no one worthy. But all that changed. When the elders told John, Weep not. The line of the tribe of Judah, Christ. He has overcome. He is therefore worthy to open the book. And there was great merriment, rejoicing. The scene in heaven goes from one which is dismal, heart-rending, to one of glory. So much that John assesses it like this. He sat back and he said, Worthy. Worthy to all honor and praise and glory. We esteem He who sits upon the throne and the Lamb who has prevailed. What a scene. Now from these verses, we're going to find, I found five. We're going to find five things that are very, very typical to us. There are five things that we're aware of down here. There are five things that we see. Almost on a daily basis. They're very familiar to us. Down here. And when we get to heaven, they're going to be up there. Let's look at them. S words tonight. Yeah. The first thing that I wrote down is the fact, and I'm thrilled about this, there's going to be singing in heaven. That made me very, very happy. There's going to be singing in heaven. Verse 9 says that they sung a new song. They have a choir. They assembled a choir. It's made up of 24 elders. For identity person, these purposes, these elders are representative of all the redeemed through all ages. Going all the way back in the Old Testament, looking all the way forth unto that last person who will be saved. These 24 elders who comprise or make up the choir, they're doing the singing. And they're singing a new song. I am personally thrilled that we're going to be singing in heaven. My wife and one of her girlfriends went to, uh, went to Sevierville. Thursday and Friday, uh, NQC, the National Quartet Convention, was doing a, uh, uh, a program there. It was a highlight. My goodness, everybody in 
Everybody who's anybody in Southern Gospel music was there. Kingdom Heirs were there. Uh, Greater Vision was there. Uh, the Hopper Brothers were, uh, were there. Uh, I mean, just everybody in the business. Triumph, Tribute, everybody in the business, except the Brotherhood. We, we didn't make it. We didn't get called. But anyway, everybody else was there. And I've been out mowing all day and I'm tired and I'm wore out. And she's sending me videos. She's, singing, she's sending me pictures of the Kingdom Hours on stage with Lauren out front. And I'm saying, thanks, hon. Thanks. And she come back telling me how great it was. How wonderful it was. And I can only imagine. You wait till we get to heaven. You think you've heard some singing down here. You wait till we get to heaven. And here's the great thing about it. For me, we're all going to have perfect pitch in heaven. Isn't that great? There'll be no such thing as going flat, going sharp, or anything else. In the studio now, they can make a great singer out of anybody. There's a program called Pro Tools. And it actually chronicles your voice pattern, where you peak up here and where you're peaking down low. And if you miss a note, they can go in there with this technology. And if you go flat, they can sharpen it. If you go sharp, they can flatten it. That's why when you pay ridiculous prices to see someone sing because you heard them on the radio and they're the greatest thing there is. And you go out and hear them in person and you're going, huh? That's why. Because they don't have Pro Tools and live performances. You're, you're getting the, the raw, the real deal. There'll be no need for Pro Tools in heaven because we'll all have perfect voices. So we're all used to singing. Most of us love music. We'll take that to heaven with us. There'll be singing in heaven. Now the second thing I wrote down might alarm some people. I hope that it wasn't anyone here. Do you know there's going to be shouting in heaven? Yeah. Yeah. Verse 12 says that they spake with a loud voice saying, Worthy is the Lamb. Loud voice. Worthy is the Lamb. I don't know. I don't know what kind of church, what the worship style was in the church that you was raised. I don't know. I don't know. I've been, I've been raised a Southern Baptist all of my life. And in my home church and most of the churches that I have been involved in, we were a little more reserved. A little more reserved. But I've sung gospel music for years. So I've been in all kinds of them. All kinds of them. I've been in some that they were so quiet. You could hear a pin drop. I have been in some that they shouted and hollered and hooped and everything else. Then I've been in some Pentecostal churches. Yeah. Yeah. They really, really know how to get it down the road. Had the privilege one time to sing in a black church. I was wore out when we got out. That's back when I was singing. I just play now. 
I was worn out. Those people sing you to death. Yeah. I was physically exhausted. If it bothers you a little bit when someone gets a little loud or gets a little excited, uh, you better ask the Lord to help you because when you go to heaven, it isn't going to be a quiet place. It really isn't. They shouted with a loud voice saying, Worthy is the Lamb. We hear a lot of shouting in churches in this day and time, but unfortunately sometimes it's more business meeting than it is any place else, but that's a different kind. We get to heaven, there'll be a lot of praising God. It won't be a quiet place. Here's the third thing I wrote down. There's going to be singing. There's going to be shouting. There's going to be satisfaction in heaven. Yeah. Now, let me ask you this. What do you think all of this hoopla and all this shouting and praising and everything is all about? Why are they doing this? I'll tell you why. Because all tears have been wiped away. There is no more sorrow. There is no more hurt. There is no more pain. All of the former things are passed away. Everything is sublime. Everything is wonderful. That is satisfying. Now we we get glimpses of satisfaction down here. Sure, there's a lot of dissatisfaction, I get that. But let's stay on the positive. There are times that we experience great satisfaction down here. I don't know of anything that is more uplifting and more beautiful than to see a lost sinner walk down and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. It's one of the most beautiful things I have ever witnessed in my life. But let me tell you, if that person is your spouse, if they are your parent, if they are your child, if they are your brother, your sister, your aunt, your uncle, it means even so much more It thrills your heart. It brings immediate satisfaction. I've been able to stand and watch young people walk down an aisle, give their heart and life to Jesus, and look back in a congregation and seeing their mom and dad sitting there, their grandparents sitting there, tears just flowing down their face. We know something about satisfaction in this life on a spiritual level. But we don't know anything compared to the way it's going to be in heaven because everything will be perfect. Everything that we consider bad or dissatisfying, we leave that all behind. There'll be singing. I'm glad for that. There'll be shouting. Yeah. There'll be satisfaction. Fourthly, and this one may surprise you, do you know there'll be salvation in heaven? You say, Ronnie, you mean people are going to get saved in heaven? No. No. But the very fact that they're in heaven means that they have had a salvation in experience. You see, that's something that those of us who are redeemed, we have down here. I have present day salvation. Right now, I have it. I'm not waiting on it. I'm not going to get it when I die. I have it right now. And when I go to heaven, 
I'm going to take that with me. There's going to be salvation in heaven. Go back to that new song we were talking about. They sung a new song. You know what it was comprised of? It had a great message in it. It was comprised of the fact that God hath redeemed us with His precious blood. The very fact that we're in heaven is because of what our Lord did for us at Calvary. I have sat back more than once and marveled at the writing ability of someone to be able to put into words some great spiritual truth. I've just been in awe at that. That's the kind of thing that the choir was singing about in this new song. People have said, is it going to be this? Is it going to be that? I don't think it's going to be anything we know down here. Somebody said one time in the pulpit it was going to be Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace is not a new song, folks. It's been around a long time. I love what it says, but it's not a new song. This one is brand new. The one they'll be singing. And you can imagine what the content, what the lyrics of this song are going to be like. Because it's going to magnify the Lord of glories. It's going to give honor and praise and glory unto Him. We're going to realize that the only reason that we are there is because of what He did. Yeah. Could be salvation in heaven. I know. I know. Because I'm going to take mine with me. Yeah. Now, save the best for last. There's going to be singing in heaven. That's great. There's going to be shouting in heaven. There's going to be satisfaction in heaven. Nobody's going to get to heaven and say, you know, this just really wasn't what I thought it was going to be. No, we're going to be perfectly satisfied, believe me. There's going to be salvation in heaven. We're going to take it with us. Here's the final one. There's going to be the Savior in heaven. And I say unto you unequivocally, if there wasn't any of these other things there, that would be worth it all. In verse number 6, John saw a lamb which had been slain. You don't have to be a great student of prophecy to know who that lamb represents. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. It was a lamb that was slain. And as you read this text, you can't help but see that this slain lamb is the centerpiece of all of heaven. He's the centerpiece. He is the focus. It is my personal conviction that when we get to heaven and see our Lord, there will be scars. There will be a terror a riveted place in His side. There'll be scars in His feet. Perhaps even on that precious brow where that crown of thorns was thrust down on His head. You say, couldn't God have fix that couldn't that have been taken care of with a surgical procedure yeah but when you look at those scars 
they are reminders of what our Lord went through that we might be in heaven. They'll be eternal reminders of grace. Every time we see our Lord, it's going to remind us of what He went through that our sin could be forgiven. Five things that we're very familiar with down here. They're going to be in heaven. They're going to be in heaven. My, my, my. What a place that's going to be. If tonight you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ personally, I pray, beg, that you'll reach out to someone and inquire about what is required to have eternal life. Because the only way you can know and have assurance that heaven is yours is to know the Savior who made it all possible. And child of God, if you're a Christian tonight and if you're a child of God, you are. Rejoice in that fact. But by the same token, be so grateful, be so thankful that you want to live your life in such a way that brings honor, praise, and glory unto Him every single day of your life. And, and Laura has challenged us two or three times, and it means so much that you don't want to tell somebody about the Will Graham crusade. You want to take them with you. You want to take them with you. You be ready at so-and-so. I'll be by. I'm going to pick you up. Let's bow.